Hello everybody and welcome! My name is Ursa Ryan and today I have for you a 24 player Europe game. Oh yes, this is gonna be fun. Across this channel we've played multiple tree start locations across various world and European maps, but I don't think I've ever done this particular challenge. We're doing a bit of rebuilding today. Today we're going to be trying to recreate the Ottoman Empire. Yes, that grand empire that spanned from the 14th century right to the end of World War One. Now, the empire itself has a hugely complicated and very interesting history and its borders fluctuated absolutely everywhere. As you can see, this particular diagram, which is very simplified, it gives a pretty good indication. It went from the beginning around Izmit sort of area and then spread amongst sort of modern day Turkey and into Europe and very slowly spread its way out. But the aim of the game is sort of an expansion to encompass as much of this land as we can. And in my head, it looks like this. The entirety of the Turkish main mainland at a very minimum, Mediterranean islands below Turkey, Greece, the lands that border the Black Sea well up into kind of the edge of the Austrian-Hungary border and well into Romania. We want to push right to the Italian border and then down in the other direction I want to control the entirety of the Tigris and Euphrates, the sea that goes all the way down to the Red Sea and of course Egypt and the North African coast all the way to Algiers. It's going to be quite the task. There's going to be a lot of people in the way. We've got Byzantium, Greece, Macedon, Scythia, Georgia, all of the sort of Euphrates civilizations like Sumeria and Babylon. We've got Egypt, of course. Phoenicia, I believe, will be starting in Carthage today. A lot of enemies. Lucky for me, though, we have one massive bombard. We're playing back with the original Ottomans, one of my favorite civs in the game to this date. They are a pleasure. I am really looking forward to this. If you want to play alongside me, come to Discord. There's going to be a lot of mods you need to set this particular game up. So it's easy to look at the mod list there as well as take the save file from my Discord and put it onto your computer yourself. If you're playing with console, I apologize. This one's not for you because it is, as I mentioned, 24 players. So slightly bigger than the maximum 20 players you're allowed. Ah, the power of mods. What do you need to know about this game? It's dirty. It's standard speed. We've got barbed clans on. Not that that particularly helps on these TSL maps. The clans don't really spawn into city-states. And Secret Societies mode is on. Because you know what I really fancy playing today? That's right, I really fancy playing Hermetic Order. <laughs> I'm not even lying, I really do. So we're going to be playing Hermetic Order where we can. Hopefully it means North Africa and the Middle East will be a little bit more interesting, but I fancy playing quite a high campus game in order to fuel the Ottoman war machine. This is, of course, Saf's Mare Nostrum. I've also got, and this is an interesting one, two mods that I think will work really well. We've got Loyal Capitals on, which means that the AI or, or myself, capitals cannot fall to loyalty. So all of those European civs, Germany, the Dutch, Gaul, France, England, England, Scotland, everyone packed in that small area. The capitals will not be lost. In order to make this game a little bit more spicy, I've put CYP's Wide and Tall mod on. We've played with this ourselves. It's a mod where if you've got an empire of seven or less cities, you start to get some rather interesting bonuses. Some rather big bonuses if you have less than four cities. We're going to have way more than the city is given to us. So the Wide and Tall mod, we will get no benefit from. No benefit whatsoever. But the AI, those small European city-states, well, they should get really, really big bonuses and hopefully we'll see a bit of a competitive Europe. I like that idea. Very small Europe that has a huge amount of science and influence in the game. You don't tend to see that in Civ 6 very often. I've also got Bear's Governor Overhaul because this mod is brilliant and there's still a few that we haven't played with yet, such as Cardinal, the General, and of course our usual Grand Vizier. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be treading the diplomatic domination line very, very well today. This is going to be the return of the Ottoman Empire. Should we get started? I think we should get started. And now, for an important update. Having been expelled from Oxford University, Ursa Bear had met a man named Paul. Oh dear. Luckily for Ursa Bear, he had amassed 40,000 subscriptions. These beautiful little signatures attracted the attention of none other than Gilgabro. Scared off by the majesty, Paul retreated and left Ursa Bear to his way. Searching for new subscriptions, Ursa Bear traveled to the coast, where lo and behold, it looked like more people. More people for subscriptions. Alas, it was not to be. Ursa Bear, our sweet 
sweet, innocent bear is now trapped, harassed by giant crabs. Will you save Ursa Bear from crabs? Will you help Ursa towards his goal? Thank you so much. Back to the video. Turn one, and as you can see, we've got a river, we've got mountains, and we've got a plains hill. Now, in the spirit of a TSL start, a true start location, we're starting in place. I could easily move, but I will not. I will play the TSL start as it should be. Obviously, there's a nice harbor here. That already is a plus four holy site, which looks pretty damn cool. And in addition, it looks like we've got at least a plus two holy site that doesn't have woods on it, which means I don't need mining. That's really good. How often on these true start location maps, you look at a really good, like this plus five holy site this would be, with the district on the other side of it, but I'd have to explore mining first. It'd be, it'd be a whole thing. We don't want to do that. No, 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 no. Looks like we have a four food tile, so I'm going to work that immediately to get my second population. There's a lot of arguments working this two, two tile first, but I like the idea of having a little bit more population, so we shall. I should get a scout out, a usual. I'm going to go and start exploring around the map. I have set a couple of sieves to guarantee they spawn in. I have guaranteed that Byzantium will spawn. I mean, after all, our bombards gained their notoriety by shooting down the great walls of Constantinople. So we've got to do a very similar thing. Dido is definitely on the map as well. I wanted to make sure we had at least a North African interest to fight. But otherwise, I want to play the Ottomans properly. I've got to go holy sites. And there's 24 people. It's going to be a lot of pressure pressure on profits today. So we have to go astrology as quickly as we can. Now, luckily for me, I know on these true, uh, true start location maps, there is a natural wonder just below me. So we're going to go and find it immediately. Do I want to immediately go and find Byzantium? Well, there's Constantinople. We're always going to be very close to each other here. Now, you know what? I'm going to let them meet me. It actually may work quite nicely that I don't have an access to the sea here, because if I did, well, they'd be able to galley rush me. And I don't know if I like that as an idea. That could be a very bad thing for me indeed. This little Asian subcontinent that I've got is really good for science. I have to say, there's a lot of mountains here. There's a lot of forest for holy sites as well. So I'm hoping my science start should be pretty good. It helps even more when you have a beautiful geothermal fissure like that as well. We're going to keep an eye on that. Or oh. later into the game, campuses with plus four or more will of course be rationalism boosted. So what I'm going to start to do is just keep track of any tile I find find with this sort of empty icon uh, of any campus that's going to be plus four or more. These are the, these are the really good campuses we want to keep an eye on. There we go. The Pamukkale. This is a wonderful, wonderful wonder. And already we have our first governor. Here it is. It's beautiful. It provides an additional amenity if you have it in your land. That's good. And you get an extra one if you put an entertainment complex near it as well. But also it grants a major adjacency bonus to theatre squares, campuses, commercial hubs, and additional standard adjacency to the holy site district. It's a really good thing to put your districts next to. Now, unfortunately, gypsum and ivory means that some of the best tiles are already taken. But I believe that's a plus five campus because of the, the geothermal fissure. So already we've got some amazing tiles here. And we can now pick our first governor choice. Governors are going to be really interesting. Now we've played with the Bears Governor Overhaul mod before. If you haven't seen this mod on some of my previous playthroughs, it changes the governor system entirely. Very similar abilities, but they tend to work empire-wide and it's a very Civ 5 way of looking at it where you open a tree and you go for things in that tree that kind of roughly help you. For instance, the last game we played out, we used Harbour Master a lot, which gives you every single one of these gives you an adopter bonus. So this one gives you Eureka for celestial navigation and shipbuilding when when you get it or you get the tech if you've already got the boosts which is wonderful and then it has a bunch of things to do with the sea extra food and production housing on coastal cities better tiles there's a lot of good stuff one of the things that i do know is that at some point i want to go for the general there's a lot of good things here additional production towards encampments and encampment buildings units get more experience from battles and plus three combat strength full stop for putting governors in this yeah you, you, you have absolutely called that right. We're going to need a lot of governors in this game. Flanking bonuses as well. There's a lot of stuff here. A huge amount of stuff that I'd like. Obviously the Grand Vizier, the usual Ottoman extra governor. It's changed slightly in the sense that it's been put with an adoption thing. So you can grant an additional governor title upon recruitment. And its base ability is quite interesting as well. Cities with an established governor from this point onwards gain 5% gold and production for each governor title. So it makes sense to put this one down pretty quick because you immediately get a new governor. But there are other bonuses that I 
I'm considering as well. We haven't yet used the Cardinal, really. Quite interesting. You get 60 faith immediately upon recruitment. That's enough for a Pantheon. And I can spread my religion a little bit quicker. I can build holy sites faster. This would help me to get a religion really quickly, especially because I get the Pantheon right off the bat. So I think this is what we're going to do. I'm going to spend my first governor, not on the Hermetic Order, which is the one I want, because this will reveal ley lines to me, but I'm going to hold off that one for a second. I'm not going to be able to put districts down for a little bit. No. Instead, I'm going to open up the Grand Vizier, pop them in my capital as such, and that gives me another governor. So I'm then going to get the Cardinal. I can't put the Cardinal anywhere, but I've got 60 faith now. I thought about this in a different game, and I thought, in such a large game with so many people, that's got to be a good choice. Now, some of the AI will have gone for the same thing, so some of the Pantheons will already have been taken, even on turn 6. But I'm hoping we have a lot of choice. In fact, we actually took first choice. Look at that, because we have the three Sattler option. Wow. Okay, that could not have gone any better for us. Lovely. What do we want to do? This is a good question, actually. I could go for the three Sattler and just expand out really quickly and get two Holy Sites down as soon as I could. Or we could go for something like Divine Spark to get more Holy Sites profit points. I think we've got pretty good appeal, haven't we? Yeah, look at all that breathtaking appeal with extra Holy Sites as well. Earth Goddess would be really nice. Having a high faith as the Ottomans is a really wonderful thing because later into the game, we will get the Grand Master's Chapel. And that'll let me turn all of that Earth Goddess glorious faith into troops, specifically Siege and Janissaries, the best musket in the game. It is a bit limiting though. If I want to replace these woods with campuses or with, you know, industry, then the appeal is going to start going down and I want to go for a total war economy really later into the game. So for now, I'm going to use my start to get a turn six settler. I think expansion on border rate works quite well as well. So that for me is a really good thing. Now we have just met Theodora because my settler has a little bit more visibility. That's fine. Doesn't matter. But hello, Theodora. Lovely to meet you. You came to the throne in naught but dreams. It's an honor to meet you. I'd love to sample your hospitality. Keep an eye on Constantinople. Yes, I don't want to know what's going on there. There's another geothermal fissure. Oh, so many of these tiles are taken up. That is really unfortunate, actually. But I want the Eris Court. We're going to go and settle down to the south. Now, Byzantium likes me minus eight. It's probably because they know exactly what I will do to Constantinople if I have a chance. <laughs> I will. It's true. Okay, there are more tiles to the south. So we've got one, two, three, four major adjacency tiles around this one. I want to make sure all of them are used ideally. I mean, this clearly has got to be a campus, given the fact that it's also got a geothermal fissure here. Oh, such good campus spots. I think we're going to have to go astrology straight into writing. Now, there are better holy site spots, so I'm going to take that away for now, and I'll just keep an eye on the spots that do open up. But my first step, I think, is going to be expanding into as much of Turkey as we can. We want to go full expansion mode. War is going to be tricky. Crossing the strait is very, very difficult. I might need to wait a little bit until at least I've got ship building. I can embark. But also, I think using the Turkish bombard has got to be something that's very important for me as well. So we're not going to try and rush war. I will probably have a peaceful early to mid game before, you know, whilst we, we bide our time, we wait, we bide, we grow. Now, because we've already had one three Sattler, the second one is quite difficult to build out. That's fine. We get, can get some pretty heavy industry. I'm sorry. I know it's supposed to be a TSL map, but I have to change the name to Bursa Ryan. Come on. It's just, it's right there. But I think just in case barbs come, instead of getting a second scout, I think I'll get a slinger and get the archery boost. Keep away the barbs if an encampment does appear. I mean, there's a lot of space on this map. It is a huge map. Chances of barbarians, very high. But I think going to settle down to the south has got to be a good thing. I don't like that volcano. That I don't like. We are going to have to keep an eye on that one. And there is a part of me that is a little bit reluctant to settle my cities too close to each other. I would like five tile minimums rather than four because I do want my cities to actually do something. Sometimes you can pack them together and that can be a bit of a problem in the long run. However, sometimes you do want them a little bit close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot myself on this plains hills. Again, that's off the coast, which is a good thing. It just means early game we can't get attacked. We'll rely on our harbors a little bit later, but I will plonk onto the gypsum. That gives me a resource to trade pretty early early game and it means I can move without having to go next to this volcano which is quite nice because it's, it's about to erupt and it's clearly going to go and destroy my settler as soon as I move onto the tile next to it. I can just I can just feel it. The game is waiting. The more tribal villages I can get. Oh that's going to be really useful. Getting a 
well-themed and well-districted holy site and campus is also going to give me a risk or i would love to go golden age into monumentality i think that's got to be a really good move for me there's the gypsum more geothermal fissures yeah there's a lot of geothermal fissures in this area void singers okay foreign trade boosted bronze working boost interesting if i wanted to go iron quickly that would be a very good way of doing it and here's astrology along with city number two three era score from settling next to the natural wonder and one era score for planting myself next to a volcano that is clearly about to erupt and why do i love the ottomans so much you may be asking yourself well the ottomans are the best domination sieve well at least they're up there in the top three in my head alongside mongolia and and Byzantium. Actually, Hungary's up there as well. They're in the top four. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of good a lot of good domination sieves why do i love them so much okay 50 percent production towards siege units there is no siege bonus in the game for production no card no building no policies nothing will give you a siege production bonus but the ottomans have one plus you get plus five combat strength against district defenses that means your catapults are actually useful but that's not even the best bit conquered cities do not lose population that's massive for loyalty and that's massive for the economy if you take a 10 pop city it's stays at 10 pop and that means you can work it and build districts immediately plus every conquered city has one more amenity than usual and four loyalty per turn that's a constant bonus no garrisoning it no putting governors in that just happens the janissary is a musket but it is stronger i think it's 60 strength rather than 55 and it has a free promotion which is awesome and it is so much cheaper to build like it's half the cost it's mad how much you can pump these out and make have no niter cost whatsoever yeah look at this look at this it's got 120 production cost and 10 nitre instead of 240 and 20 so it's exactly half the cost and for that instead of 55 melee strength you get 60 and a promotion they are brilliant the only rule is that you cannot make them in any city you haven't conquered otherwise you'll lose a population so that's a bit of a problem but honestly we're going to conquer cities we'll be fine and that's not even our best unit our best unit is the barbary corsair it is a pillaging privateer replacement that has a and let's just read this together no movement cost to coastal raid it means you can coastal raid an entire district without any movement points it's amazing the grand bazaar means we want to be building commercial hubs it's really good it means strategics generate faster which is great for the economy and you get an extra immunity for every luxury in a city it's brilliant it's just so good and on top of that the grand vizier my own unique promotable governor eventually we're going to put one more promotion into him and get to this one Sarah grants all units within 10 tiles of the city center 10 combat strength when attacking defensible districts that means with no other bonuses once i unlock a catapult with a bombard strength of 35 i get plus 5 from the ottoman ability the great turkish bombard so that's 40 strength and then plus 10 from my governor so the catapults attack with 50 strength against the city walls or 60 if you're a trebuchet and it just gets more crazy from there just trust me it is well worth it it's it's one of the best in fact is it the best yeah one of the best abilities like it's up there i don't know if it is the best but it means conquering is easy we, we, yeah we're going to be pushing our, our weight around quite significantly this game now this is one of the canvas spots i'd identified but it is a plus four holy site i'm going to take advantage of that especially because this is another campus spot so i mean that would be amazing if i plumped that down and then i put a holy site down there it would be plus five so yeah this is this is suddenly really really good we're gonna have to buy a few tiles in this city to make it decent but let's get that holy site down immediately oh a dead end interesting okay well i will probably end up settling on top of the geothermal fissure then there's no housing here which is a little bit annoying but it means i can get to the back end of this city and already look at that that's a plus six campus we could get plus five there there's a lot of good options here a lot of good options but really good cities we love it well, byzantium suddenly have a warrior all the way around here How have you done that what are you doing hmm byzantium troops on my continent never happy they probably just walked around the entirety of the black sea but 13 turns feels rather quick don't know how they've done that but i for one find it slightly disconcerting now the issue with my holy site this is the issue at the moment right now my holy site can't be built anywhere with the wood because i can't replace the wood and i've only got so much gold i've only got 50 gold for a purchase we've got 72 in the bank right now i could sell my gypsum 
Not for a lot, but I could sell it. That would let me spend a lot of money on some tiles, but I don't know if I want to use my gold that quickly. I think I might settle on a bit of a subpar holy site in my capital, as long as it's decent enough. Like, there's a plus three over in this area. I think getting the religion is the priority. There's another plus three there as well because of the two woods, although that would get worse if I chopped them down, which is a likelihood. Though there's a lot of plus threes around. I don't think I'm going to really do better in my capital without actually building out quite substantially. So I'm going to go, because there's a little bit more space, I'm going to put the holy site out on this tile. I think that's the way to do it, because the government plaza is more likely to be plopped around this area. So 50 gold, let's buy the tile, plonk the holy site down. Both will be done within nine turns. Actually, even quicker with urban planning. Let's put that in and we'll keep surveying until we've got a barbarian problem. I do have a scout. Let's see if we can upgrade them a little bit. All the while, we're going to keep an eye on the profit points. The AI is going to go heavy on these. I do want the first religion. I want the choice. I want to say, you know what? I was the one that turned down Feed the World, you know? Uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go, really. Turn 17 and somebody has a profit point out. Hmm, that's not good. Never mind. There was no stone, by the way. No stone that I could see to rush out the Stonehenge. Oh, you're going to denounce me, are you? Okay. Well, that's no fun. I don't like that at all. Oh, Hattusa, scientific city-state. First to find them. How have I done that? There was a Byzantine warrior just there. I don't know. Something is very strange. Maybe it spawned. Did the warrior spawn the other side of the water? I don't know. Something really weird is happening there. 40 gold. That'll do. I'm really, really hoping for the super rare governor in a tribal village. Is, is that a difficulty thing or can you get that on dirty? I think you can get it on dirty. I don't know. Who knows? Two people now getting one profit point per turn. Oh, it's going to be a little bit spicy. If I were to get a builder, I would want irrigation immediately. So I'm just going to put a few turns in and see how much it would cost for a builder 200 now the denouncement from Byzantium means they don't want my gypsum which is a bit of a shame but don't worry we're gonna find other people Europe will find me soon enough and we're going over towards Georgia and Scythia and we'll go and send our warrior towards Babylon Gilgabro all those people three era score from a beautiful holy side yes I know it's so stunning and as I say I want my profit first I'm gonna get one point per turn now do I go for the seven turn shrine or the three turn holy site prayers or oh, it's a real choice that that is a real choice i could i mean i could spend another governor on getting patron saint which could be temporary uh, production towards holy site buildings but it's not very good in ability i'm kind of tempted to go hermetic soon to reveal the ley lines i mean that would be more useful until i have to rush i am going to go for the shrine i never regret going for it because if i do go feed the world i've got the extra food and housing if i don't i've got the extra uh, faith for monumentality i know i'll get faith from completing the projects but we'll keep an eye on it oh wow yes yeah, hey keeping an eye on it four people are now getting a profit point per turn and we're one of now five wow we've got two points coming in per turn oh this galley's doing that hilarious thing where it can see me it wants to attack me it's got player bias. It's not going to go for Constantinople. It wants to attack me, but it's just going up and down the coast over and over and over and over because it's got no way of getting in. I'm very, very pleased we didn't settle on the coast now. <laughs> Very pleased. Great bath gone on turn 22. Blimey. That is so quick. Oh, don't think about it too hard. Uh, that's a tribal village vote. Come on, give me something good. 40 gold again. I mean, the gold's not bad, to be fair. I will take the gold, but oh, I wish I could have something more exciting. Just going to save myself on the irrigation boost here and just flip to writing because I will buy the builder as soon as I can. If I can find anyone else, Georgia will do, Babylon will do, anyone that wants to buy my beautiful gypsum. Do I want, oh, there's so much forest on this map. I'm actually going to go ranger first. I very rarely do this, but I will go ranger. So there's another person getting two points per turn, but I do have the edge just now. I'm two turns off the shrine. That'll put me to three points per turn. The ultimate, by the way, is I want to spread my religion to Byzantium. Him. That really annoys them, but will set me up later for quite a good conquest. So that's something we are keeping in mind. I'm just keeping an eye on this like a hawk. If someone runs a project, they'll get a huge boost. We're neck and neck with someone though. 12 points and 13 points here with one. Literally neck and neck. But there is a shrine. Lovely. Now I'm going to run holy site prayers. Let's just get the religion out quickly. I could do with the era score, to be absolutely honest with you. That 
However, it's a rock vulture clan. Oh, that is not what we wanted to see. We're going to have a barb problem now. Okay, let's instead get the slinger out. Yeah, we're going to have to do that. I sent all of my troops ambitiously in another direction to go and explore. Now, on such a large map, I think the tribal villages make it worth it. But yeah, that's uh, I, I probably should have kept the visibility in that area. No matter. They're more likely to send... I mean, actually, I was going to say that they're, they're not an evil one, are they? Rock Vulture is one of the land tribes and they've already sent the scout and they've already found me. Yeah, that's a problem. Envoy, let's hold on to that. I can't quite get her to suggest yet, but I will do soon. So we're getting three points. Three points is good. I really could have used that project. I have to say, having to get the sling is really annoying. I could buy a spearman, but I don't want to do that. I'm saving my gold for the builder. Mm, your scout's going to go in some random direction, are you? Okay, no worries. Let's go mining now. So I can put my campuses down when I'm done. And there's my second shrine, which means I'm now getting four points per turn. Excellent. And we can get a slinger hit in against that barb. I think one campus is going to be plenty for now. Sorry, one slinger, not a campus. What am I talking about? Who knows what I'm talking about secretly, but the camps can go down in three turns. God, my production is mega. It's so good. Let's get a holy set prayers done. Mate. I want this religion and I'll get one going there as well. Both cities. I never, this, this is the good thing about getting a, a second city out just so quickly. It's just being able to rush two separate projects at once. It's really big. Well, I realize one thing I should be doing is putting my car cardinal down let's pop my cardinal down in my second city yeah I and mean, then at least when i get a religion the religious spread will be twice as powerful which would be quite good georgia i thought i'd meet you in misdirection honor to meet you yes let's exchange capitals to blisi now yerevan will be somewhere for me to meet hopefully you want to buy my gypsum yeah you do 156 gold yes okay this does make me slightly unhappy but what i can do now is get the builder and then we can get an improvement here and then improve both citruses that'll do the improvement for irrigation with the farm and it'll do the improvement with craftsmanship so that's excellent all round georgia is one going for a religion interesting byzantium is also going for a religion but they're gonna have to speed up or they may miss out on one which is interesting oh byzantium without a religion that would be so unfortunate okay as hoped they are charging me i don't mind that i'm just gonna attack i'm on a hill i'm in a wood i do have the survey card in which is a little bit annoying i'm not gonna spend the 25 gold we're gonna let that work itself through there is a farm there's the irrigation boost so i'll just work that afterwards you know we'll just do that in the other direction irrigation then mining like so come on get the religion get it quick we need era score we need it i think getting a religion if we get the first religion and then if we build a beautiful campus i think we'll get the golden age but i'm not sure georgia was minus eight by the way so unfortunately i was never going to make friends with her but it was worth a try here's a holy site prayers project do i need to do more than one in my capital or will this do i was getting four points and i'm on 30 we'll just see how this goes 47 and 60 now i don't need to do another project excellent oh that slinger took a lot of damage without that plus five it's quite painful actually fine i will pull back and get a second slinger which is a little bit annoying but we'll pull the campus out next how's the scientist points going probably get the plus one science on on libraries if we were lucky being pulled in lots of different directions here but you never know you never know what are you gonna do you're gonna charge me they're gonna charge me okay this is an even worse tile than the other one so we'll go back for a sec that is annoying but if they move close to me i'll be able to attack from the city and the warriors coming back now to help out so it's all good in the long run let's get discipline in so we can kill the barb even quicker now we'll consider oh, craftsmanship i can't get now we'll just get a couple points into early empire and once this holy site prayer is done i should have first religion um i'm sorry that's a tile on my continent i do not approve i do not approve at all anyway plantation Bam. That's another luxury. And Georgia will buy this one for even more gold. I would rather be unhappy and rich. <laughs> Which is probably more of a more of a thing for me to deal with. I'm actually going to make this city my holy city. Normally I'd make my capital the holy city. But this is where my cardinal is going to be. And the spread of the religion will be double from the holy city. Which will do a little bit more. Sure it would spread closer to Constantinople. If I you know, put it from my capital. But honestly it's a very small difference. That was an era score by the way for claiming the great person. So just that in itself is wonderful. I don't think anyone's made a religion. Oh no Judaism has been made. I didn't even see that. Stonehenge got completed 
Oh, we are lucky. We are lucky that that is not a problem. And that scout has come to find me and steal my builder. But luckily for me, my units were there and ready to claw them back. So we're not going to get the first religion, unfortunately. But that's okay. We do not mind. Why is there no, like, oh, this is the closest thing to a red religion. I just wanted a red one. So these are my choices available to me at the moment. Plus one immunity into special districts. This is a really, really good one to have at war. This combined with my Ottoman ability means that all cities would have two immunities. Sounds small, but two is enough to go one increment on a city upwards. So if they were content, it would go to happy. If it was happy, it would go to ecstatic. So basically all yields are boosted by 10. It's really good. Reliquaries is always fun. All cities with world wonders for faith. I do have a world wonder. So weirdly, that is quite useful. Work ethic. I have a lot of production in my holy sites. I've, I think I've done a plus three and a plus four. So that's a lot of production. However, looking at my land, one thing I'm lacking is flat arable land. Food is going to be really, really tough. So for me, feed the world is more important. This means that I can get my holy sites to give me food, which gives me more housing. So I can work more population. That gives me more woods, more lumber mills, more mines. In, in the end, Feed the World, in my opinion, gives more production than Work Ethic, and it gives you another district. That's why I think Feed the World is better than Work Ethic. Plus, instead of just building the Holy Site, you actually have to build the Shrine and the Temple to get the benefit. So you're forced to do something that's actually quite handy. That's why I think it's so good. Eventually, we're going to get something like cross-cultural dialogue or everyone's favorite, go to the dentist and <laughs> see their teeth. But for now, we're going to go, oh, I think I'm going to have to go for my favorite crusade. It just means that it becomes comes a great Turkish bombard crusade with a governor. We'll see some very silly stacking, you know, bonuses going on. I was going to say penalty for a sec there. No, no, the opposite. Some bonuses. That's what we're going to see. So what we'll see now is that both my cities now have a lot more food and are starting to grow. And this will boost hugely once we get the temples up. Now, both cities are unhappy at the moment, which is a little bit of a problem. It's because I'm selling away all my luxuries. I do want to get myself the ability to settle out as quickly as I can. I'm tempted to go pioneer this game to start with. Two population in the capital upon recruitment is amazingly fun. And settlers trained in the city that the governor is established in do not consume population. Two food in every city would help massively with the issue I've got at the moment of having no food around. And resettlement. Production towards settlers. New cities start with an extra population. And an extra 4,004 loyalty. And two housing and two amenities in every city. This is really, really good late game for when we go to war. Do you want Void Singers, though? I think we might have to go... Sorry, um, Hermetic Order, because I want to find the ley lands so we'll do that i'm just working on a monument in my second city whilst it works itself out i'm saving my gold up for a reason i'm gonna actually save it up to buy a settler i think that works for me nicely let's get the campus going i could get plus four i'm working this tower which isn't ideal but it would cost me 150 gold to buy one of these two tiles so i don't think i'm gonna do that if this city grabs this one and if I put another city around here, then I could grab that out. So, mm, yeah, this is probably the ideal campus location, thinking about it. This would be a plus five. Just involves me spending money on a on a mountain tower, which isn't ideal. Ugh, it's an investment. It's an investment. It would be 90, 180, 240 gold if I were to buy all of these tiles, but it would give me access to the deer, which is actually a really good tile. So I'm actually going to do this. It costs me another 90 gold more, and that's pretty much my entire settler fund. And I realize I should have bought it from Halep. I just spent 30 gold. I didn't need to there. Never mind. There's a plus five campus. Fine. I think that's a good thing for later. We're not worrying about the government plaza on these cities, by the way. I will build it. and I'm planning on building it in my capital as soon as I can, but we don't want to rely on our campus being like, you know, we, we don't need our campus to, to work a government plaza adjacency. It should be fine without it. So as I find this beautiful new plantation, which gives me craftsmanship, can't help but feel that we are due to fight quite a colossal battle with the barbarians to the west of Bursa Rhine. Come on, bring it to me. You come to me, friends. I'm gonna stand my ground and grind you into the dust, actually. This will be a really good chunk of the Eriscourt. So my capital is spreading my religion at two per turn, but my holy city is now eight per turn, which is amazing. So the cardinal is having a small effect. It might actually convert uh, Constantinople without me needing to do anything, which would be relatively amusing. We get lucky on any of our horses. There are a few you around, you know? That's not too bad. That's really not too bad. Okay, settlers. Settlers I really do need to focus on, so maybe the encampment depends on how many military city-states we find. They they 
thing, one of the strategies I often use, if there's a bunch of military city-states, three, maybe two or three, they all give extra production towards barracks and armories and things like that. So getting an encampment in the city that you want to spam settlers from can often be a very effective strategy. Goodness me, look at all this land. It's amazing. We've got to get our saddle on. So my wall of slingers is holding firm at the moment, which is amazing. Grind those promotions. Yes, fortify this warrior. All they can do is wave assault me one at a time. It's not going to work. Lumber mills are going to be so effective on this start. I am just thinking about that, actually. Construction is the way I want to go. That involves a water mill, a pasture, and a quarry. Well, the water mill is over here, and I need to mine a resource to get that. Hmm. There's copper down there to the south. I guess that is the problem. If I found the iron, that would be a mineable resource. Let's go and do that. I, I'm in that stage of the game where every single tech is equally important. How are you at sea already, Byzantium? Oh, if they start settling over on my continent, I'm going to be deeply disappointed with them. That'll help though. Look at that. That is a huge, huge campus plus five science already. Excellent stuff. And I want to try and get this scientist ideally. The plus one libraries and a three library. That's huge. So we're going to put a little bit of work into that. I could get hanging gardens or a settler or oh, both of those are quite useful to be fair. But I think the extra library would be an amazing addition into my empire right now. The barbs are just coming to fight me, so I'm just going to start whittling them down. I will keep an eye on what Byzantium does. I do not want them to be settling too near me. If they go and settle over there, I'm going to have to divert a lot of production towards settlers. Hanging on for monumentality, that's the thing. Is it worth doing that? Or do we want to go monumental uh, get the settler ASAP? Oh. No, I think I want the scientist. There's too many distracting things. You just stood in my land. Okay. I might be able to pull off a surprise war here and steal the settler if I'm, if I'm lucky. See how it works out. But look, I've got volley. Got another volley. We're holding firm. Those barbs don't stand a chance. I have another monument in my second city. I'm just going to get the trader up and running. I'll get a nice road between my cities and boost currency for later in the game. This spearman is actually on a hill and across a river. You can attack me if you want. It's not going to help you. That looks like somebody. Oh, that's the last era score I needed. I think that might be New Persia. I'm ahead of this way. They are going to go and settle right next to me. Oh, that is annoying. No matter. We will go and steal their land in a bit. Don't you worry about that. Actually, look at that. Little counterattacks worked quite well there. And there's my golden age. Nader Shah. Hello. Honour to meet you. Love to sample your hospitality. Do you like citrus? Yeah, you do. Yes, 200 gold. And they'll give me some gypsum back for 40. <laughs> so I'm actually no worse off. Oh, if only my borders were closed off, I could trap them on that tile. It's not, unfortunately. Yeah, they're gonna they're just gonna go end up settling. And it's a bit annoying. They do have a second warrior over here. There's not much I can do to fight this. Not at the moment, not with these barbarians distracting my armies in both directions, actually. Oh, you know what? We're gonna pass these ones off. I'm gonna stand here and get them to attack me. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami. Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Debel Time, Shoelace, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Clint Hennis, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!